welcome back everybody to the birdies and bourbon show uh once cheers. again cheers <laughs> pb uh once again pb is joining the show i think he's still waiting on his bottle of pappy uh still yep. still held up in customs on the way to the dominican that's right <laughs> so um so we find pb die in south carolina there's here here's Here's cheers to you too. Oh you yeah, cheers, sir. Good, uh, a, a, a little good Dominican rum. Oh, oh nice, nice. What uh, what did did you what brand did you go for? It's called it's it's XB or fifteen. It's called Equive down there. It's made by Brugal. Very nice, very oh, smooth. Oh nice, yeah. I, I like. I'm a fan of Brugal. Yep. Okay. We'll have to we'll have to get you. I, over guys, been you've been. Did, did you watch any of the TV coverage today down there at Kiowa? Uh, we did watch some of it, and uh, I'll tell you what. I don't know if I could get that ball out of the rough. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to put on a few pounds before that happens. They said they hadn't mowed it in over a month. Well, I don't know about the rough down there, but Mr. Goodwin has made the finest statue I've ever seen of my dad. It's, it's, just, it's like Pete has come alive again. Wow! Absolutely fabulous what he did. Very cool. Uh, you know, I, I can't, I cannot thank Mr. Goodwin enough. That's cool. Yeah, un understandably so. So you, you brought that up. I'm glad you did. That way, I didn't have to steer us down that road first, and and maybe not so much the statue, but um, but your dad wrote a book after he and your mom did the course, right? And it's uh, bury me in a pot bunker, and and wasn't uh, the ocean course the inspiration for that? Oh, well, it, that would be a, I would say, I don't know about the inspiration. It's part of it, but I mean, mom and dad's whole lives are the inspiration behind it. Okay. You know, I mean, it, when you read the book, you know, it's, it's a whole life story and, and their, their love of the game of golf. And, and uh, you know, as dad said, you know, uh, you know, dad's never worked a day in his life when he, when he left the insurance business, started building golf courses. He always had a lot of fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so so you've seen. Uh, I'm sure you've watched a little bit of the tournament, right? Or a little bit of the the pre-tournament stuff, right? Kind of the warm ups and such. Oh yeah, I watched it for about two hours today. Okay, course uh, course looks yeah. good. Does it meet uh, meets die standards? I'm sure. Well, let me tell you, they take really great care of it down there, and it's 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 going to be, you know, people don't realize that. Uh, how dad set that course up to where one hole could play extremely long one day and extremely short the other, depending upon on the direction of the wind. And, uh, there's some tees back there that, that, uh, probably haven't ever been planted, but they were built and it's going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, the wind, wind keeps the challenges up. It sounds like it's going to be wind out of the East for three days and then maybe switch out of the Southwest, which will definitely challenge the players. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, because you, no, you don't you get a lot of the typical or standard. Uh, I shouldn't say standard. I don't think there's anything that uh, that he did that was sta standard to him, maybe. But uh, uh, kind of the the, uh, the the day the die footprint, if you will. But uh, you know, a lot of things kind of weren't really there, right? I mean, from the trees and and some of the the, the landscape. I mean, it, you know, in in what I'm understanding, he kind of took the uh, some links and in inspiration and built a course that has the most ocean or seaside holes of any course in the U.S. Is that right? Well, you know, essentially all 18 are seaside because you can see the ocean from, from every hole virtually. And, uh, but I mean, you know, you know, the, the great thing, you know, that course was built when uh, Hurricane Hugo hit the Carolinas and, and just devastated that part of the world. And you know, luckily, Kiowa was on the, uh, the uh, south side of the hurricane, and the winds came from inland blowing out to the sea, so it wasn't flooded. But, you know, when Dad went in there, the, the damage was there. It was just, just uh, there's no way to even remember Hugo unless you were there. And he not only, you know, got that golf course built under kind of emergency situations, but also helped revegetate about five miles of shoreline with the sea oats. And, I mean, you know, and, and he just did a spectacular job under the most difficult conditions ever. And he's worked 
with the good ones, you know, and, and, and with that golf course ever since, I mean, you know, to, uh, to his, you know, last breath, you know, he was always a participant and, and, and uh, every aspect of that golf course from uh, burying every TV cable, every electric line and, and then, you know, taking down mounds to make spectator seating and then put the mounds back up again. And, and, uh, you know, so I mean, he's, you know, he, he's had a lot of fun with that golf course. And as I said, you know, the, you know, the Goodwin family have absolutely been super to my dad. So, and, uh, they let him do what he wanted to do out there. And, and when you let dad do what he wants to do, you know, the, the job is just first class all the way. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. So, now was this course, it, was this already a project prior to, uh, Hugo, or was this something that kind of came along after the fact, or did it speed things up or was that a kind of a well, play? The original, original people behind it were the landmark people, the same people behind Oak tree and PJ West and, and, uh, uh, all that. And they had the project started and, but when Hugo hit, um, they sent one of their key people, a guy named Jason McCoy, who now works for Mr. Norman and sent him with a very large certified check down to Savannah. And he went into Caterpillar and took every piece of equipment they had and got a couple of barges. And he, you know, went right up the coastline and, and unloaded everything and started working, the, you know, two days after Hugo. Hmm. And they got a lot of work done before anybody knew kind of what's going on. But uh, they had permits to do the clearing and, and so many things, but they just kept going. And, you know, when it became apparent what dad was doing and people said, well, Pete, I don't know if you can do this. He says, give me 10 days. I'll have it finished. Oh, wow. And because dad, dad was mom and dad were up there living on the project hmm. and nobody got out on the property without dad knowing who they were first. And he, and his, his rapport with the, Coastal Commission, all those people those days was just fantastic. And and because he was there, every time they'd show up, he was there, he'd walk them through saying, This is what we're doing. And he said, you know, and the you know, the Ryder Cup's coming, it's gonna bring a tremendous amount of, you know, uh, cash inflow into the Charleston area. And you know, you need that right now. So they just let him do what he had to do. And it all worked out really kind of nice. And uh with the landmark people behind him, Joe Walser and Ernie Vossler and those guys. But, you know, dad had built several golf courses for, they just, you know, let dad run the show. And, uh, you know, when, when, when dad, you know, as, as we say, you know, he was the leader of the three ring circus and it's just, there, there's too many stories to tell out there, but I mean, literally dad spent almost a year of his life up there getting that golf course built. Mm. So, you think I don't you- know if you call him a designer or architect, but he was, he was definitely running the job, so you might call him the construction superintendent. Too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, bulldozer operator. I know that's your title, isn't it? The bulldozer operator. Did no, you yeah, do- as, I to- as, I t- as I told you before, I'm I'm your worst enemy. I'm a bulldozer operator with a scratch handicap and an Irish sense of humor. I, <laughs> exactly. You know, as I said, I worked with my dad a lot of years. We, you know, we had a lot of fun together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you, um, did you participate at all in the ocean course, uh, in the development of that? I played it six weeks before it was open. All right. That was my participation. So, so you gave it <laughs> and, a test run. And, 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 I, and, I, and I played it with at that time uh, that became my future bride. So yeah, I, I participated very good at the ocean course. Uh, you, you, you must've done something right down there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so, and, uh, so I'm going to go back in time. Well, not, not, I won't go back in time, but out of the, um, uh, you know, your, your mother and your dad projects, where do you think this ranks as far as, uh, you know, what they've done, right? And it could be, doesn't have to necessarily be for landscape or the views or, you know, but maybe it's the time that they spent there or what they did back for the environment or, or however you want to translate it back. But in, in PB's terms, how do you think this kind of ranks in, in, you know, their projects together? Well, you know, if you, if you talk about the top five projects, lifetime projects mm-hmm. that my dad, you know, was in love with, of course, he had his love affair with Crooked Stick, and you know how much he's participated in Crooked Stick over the years. Sure. Mm-hmm. And the other would be, you know, Teeth the Dog down there in the Dominican Republic, which, you know, just had a constant love affair with. 
And TPC with Dean Beeman, the progress that was made over the years, you know, it's just been absolutely fantastic. And, you know, Kiowa is definitely in that top five because when he built the golf course for the landmark people, and then after Mr. Goodwin acquired it, he stayed on board and kept coming back and making improvements. And then, you know, uh, you know, uh, in, in the, in, in that leading five has got to be, you know, dad's had a lot of fun with Herb Kohler up there in Wisconsin. So, you know, <laughs> and, and he, he, at a drop of a hat, he would go back to his projects and participate and, and literally, you know, as we say, would, would do it just for transportation and a, and a turkey sandwich, just cause he liked being involved, you know, you know, we, you know, and it's, it's like, as I said, it's like watching your children grow and watching them graduate high school and college and all that stuff. You're just proud of it and you're glad to be involved with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, your kid was definitely in the top five, but I mean, dad's had so many of them, you know, but you know, the, the fact that the owners let you participate in the ongoing development of the property is really very special. And, and the, the last one of all those deals is also Harbor town, which Mr. Goodwin, you know, is in control of too. So, those are five pretty good, pretty good projects, you know, that he's had in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the uh, the who's who of golf courses, right? So you kind of just rattled, uh, <laughs> yeah, set many of them off. What what's uh, what's the fondness, or what's in, in working with your dad for all those years? Um, the, the, it seems there's this keen attraction, and and maybe it's just because it's it's golf, and it's you know it's it's got to be scenic and those things. But you know, you mentioned two specifically, right? One being uh, teeth of the dog. And, and I think I you could be wrong. I did make it down this trip, but the next trip I'm making it down uh, <laughs> for a round of golf yep. with you. But, uh, and I think every hole there, you got water views, right? Teeth of the dog. Uh, yes. Yeah. You, and, you can see, you can see, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You can see, you can see the water from every hole at teeth of the dog. And, and a challenge as Am we do. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. There's, 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 there's two or three holes you may not be able to see the Caribbean. Yeah. Okay. And, I'm thinking and, of, but you mentioned the challenge of, of, you know, that, that whole construction, right. And kind of was just continuous and ongoing. And, you know, as you just mentioned with, you know, the, the uh, hurricane that came through and obviously presented its own challenges in that, what's the, was it just that whole, like he, he wanted that challenge and, uh, you know, of, it's like, I don't know if this can be done or Well, I guess you, I'm sure you guys never approached the job of, I don't know that this can be done. It was probably more of a, uh, Hey, I can do this. I've just got to figure out how to do it. Uh, I mean, was that the puzzle? Is that kind of that attraction? Uh, no, it's more like you learn a little bit more every day and you're always willing to learn more every day. And maybe I didn't think about that the first time and, or maybe I screwed it up and I might be able to fix a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's you know dad always told me he said you know what are you gonna do next he says spend the rest of my career fixing my mistakes that's funny that's funny that's good so, and you know when you look that way and you know we always kind of you know laugh saying you know i've lived to make you know two million six hundred twelve thousand mistakes and i hope to live to make five million mistakes <laughs> in my life so but um you know uh it's just like your attitude and your approach. And of course, you know, the, uh, I want to say the, the, the passion dad has for the integrity of the game of golf and, you know, with the equipment making vast improvements, just like anything else from, you know, automobiles to airplanes, you know, he, he wanted to toughen up the golf courses for the best players. And when you to do that, the only way to do it is lengthen it because a real test of golf is a golf course that you need to use every club in your bag and not just driver gap wedge. And mm -hmm. so you know, when dad grew up, you know, in the thirties and forties and, and the type of clubs then, and, and as, as when I grew up in the, you know, and played a lot of college golf seventies and eighties, that was a, a major thing to do. And, and if a golf course was, you know, 6,900 to 7,100 yards long, it was long. Mm -hmm. and used every club in your bag. Well, you know, I guarantee you they're going to use every club in their bag at, at the ocean course, you know, with the, uh, the, uh, the prevailing breezes and the ability of the PGA to set those holes up as long as they need to be to, you know, 
what does it take to get a pro to hit driver four iron nowadays? That's, you know, driver four iron for the pros is 530 yards. At That's least. Pretty good par four. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good par four. <laughs> so, you know, you know, and, and, you know, that was, a, that, that's part of the game of golf is needing to use every club in your bag. You know, you, you got to learn how to hit a two iron again and not just off the tee, but I mean, having hit a driver two iron to get to a golf hole, that's, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's dad was very passionate about making the good players think and use every club in their bag. Yep. 100%. Yeah, well, I, I believe this is and will be the longest course they play on tour this year. Mm -hmm. uh, by by several, believe it, I, there's some tees back behind the ones they're playing that haven't been planted yet. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> well, it, now it says so. Do, does the tees that are back there? You're saying you don't think they've got those grassed in? When I left there with my dad one time, I think he said he had tees going back almost 9,400 yards. Ooh. Ooh, wow. He, that, that, that's, that's if every hole was to the max. But see, his philosophy was that you can make one hole play exceptionally long downwind sure. and, you know, at 540 yards, the next day make it play 420 yards into the wind. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But you would, you would not make all 18 holes the very, very, very backs. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, yeah, but sure. that was his fault that, he, you know, you got to remember that you build a golf course to be a, like a private members club, like cricket stick. Okay. You build a golf course down at teeth, the dog, that's going to be a destination resort golf course. Then all of a sudden Ernie and Joe Walsh sort of look at you and say, I want you to build the hardest damn golf course you can build on it. We're going to test the pros. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like saying, okay, we're going to take the top 33 guys going around that circle in two weeks at 240 miles an hour. You got to build a track for those 33 spe you know, you know, specific guys racing around Indy or, you know, any formula type race. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when your, your instructions are day one, we're setting this thing up for the Ryder Cup, you know, and then you also have to make it playable. For, as I say, Mrs. Haversham has got to be able to get around a golf course. So, you know, and, and that's, that's accomplished out there. But from those, the, the, the tips of those tees back there, it's a long one. And, you know, luckily, I played uh, the back tees one time a long time ago when I was hitting it pretty good. I'm 65 now, and I have no problem playing the senior tees. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I mean, it makes a hell of a lot more enjoyable, right? So. Well, you know, golf is golf is not supposed to be fair, but it's supposed to be fun. Yep. And you know, you know if, if you go down to TPC and play the tips, you're not having fun. You're you know, you're you're punishing yourself. Same thing at Kiowa. You know, you know, if you want to play a golf course six thousand yards, that's fine. If you want to play fifty six hundred, that's fine. You know, the girls got to get down, you know, fifty one to forty nine hundred yards, and then the the you know the senior. Women should be down there, you know, 4,400 yards. Let them, have, let them have fun. Well, Dan yeah. can't Make bring golf, enough. Dan can't fun. bring enough balls to play anything but the forward tees. So it's true. It's a good point. Like, uh, <laughs> nobody's carrying my bag. Just, just, just remember, Dan, that every golf ball you lose helps solve the unemployment problems of the world. <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> Use expensive balls. Right? Use expensive balls. Lose a lot of them. <laughs> Recycle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, what's uh, what do you? So, it, the ocean course. So, what do you think their biggest challenge is going to be? We've talked about the wind. You can go down that direction if you want to, but but the you know the um, the field looks really really good. Uh, we're going to have a lot of. Uh, I don't want to say. I'm going to say a lot of first time participants in a tournament round at the ocean course. But everybody's played the course, right? Generally speaking, anybody that's in contention has played it. Maybe not in a in a competition round. But what do you think that looks like for the uh, the new person coming in, right? I mean, that I've never played a competition round like Rory McIlroy in 2012. Never played a competition round, and he laps the field by eight strokes. W what does that look like this week? You think? Well, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a lot of knee knockers out there. You know, uh, with the wind and the, and 
I'm, I'm sure that the crew has got the golf course in just pristine shape and the greens are going to be rolling pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be real, you know, you know, white knuckle knee knocker putts, you know, and shots people are going to look at. And, you know, you throw in that, you know, as I said, that you know that that, that bad term a guy used to be called VD. It was called mm. visual <laughs> disturbing or visual intimidation, and you know, and and, and all the different uh, I'm going to say optical illusions that we try to create. You know, Dad was pretty good doing that stuff, and there's some you know, you know, you know, cut and jump areas out there, and uh, you know, if you miss it on one side or the other there's some, some tough stuff out there and you think about it and, you know, and you go back and play in the British opens and St. Andrews, or, you know, you go to world St. George's or, you know, you know, even up world port rush, this and that, you know, the roughs over there, they're horrendous. Yeah. And what they've got over at Kiowa is, is nothing different than that. And, you know, you think about it, there's not a tree between Kiowa and Ireland. <laughs> okay. you're putting so, it into a whole new perspective for us. it's true they're, 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 you know so so from between kiowa and la Hinch, there ain't much but water okay and uh so there's nothing to stop the wind and uh so if the wind blows that's gonna make it and it's the same thing you know you know you know when you know when you play at augusta and you know the, the winds are blowing you got some holes that the winds doesn't get to you you know, I explained to you before that when dad built the 17th green at TPC, he got the channel going down 18. He got the channel coming down uh, 16 and he cut the channel in the parking lot that when yep. the wind came from different directions, it would swirl on top of the green. Mm-hmm. That's and that's people insane. think you're crazy. No, I'm not crazy because I was there when he did it. <laughs> now, it's, it's, it's altered a little bit because they put some extra spectator mounds up there. I mean, some spectator seating sure. behind 17 block those winds, but the winds above those seatings is still doing the same thing. It's swirling. Mm-hmm. So you know, mm-hmm. luckily at the, at the ocean course, the wind comes out of one direction. It doesn't, you know, it's not like, you know, when you play Seminole up there in North Palm, Northern Palm beach, you play in one day and the wind can come out of four different directions. Right. That's a rarity at Kiowa, but you know, it can come out of the Southeast and come out of the east, but if it flips over there to the southwest or comes out of the west, the, the golf course, the whole uh, picture, the whole attitude of the golf course changes when the wind changes. There. It, I'm so, going you know, I'm, I'm to nerd out a little bit because I, I oh find boy. that kind of fascinating. Oh and, and first off, I'm going to have to make sure I take really good notes. You're not supposed to remember what we talked about the last time because <laughs> if I don't, <laughs> then it could go, it could be really sideways, but I do remember that statement, by the way. I do, and, yeah. and I use it from time to time. I don't use it as a, an original, uh, but you know, if it for short for time, I may not mention you, uh, <laughs> so, but, but, but okay. in all fairness, but in all fairness, um, but so, and you, you're talking about this win thing, right? And, and I mean, you think about as a golfer, that somebody approaching the golf course, you think about uh, we. I, I tend, I tend personally to think about uh, first. First thoughts are the physical uh, attributes of the course, right? Is there a lot of undulation, a lot of slope? Or is there rocks? Are there trees? And you know these, uh, you know, the, kind of the the non tangible. Well, I guess they're tangible, but you know things like the wind and you know is it going to rain and which way is the rain coming in? I mean, those are things you probably don't really think about because if it's a really crappy day as an amateur golfer, it's probably like, eh, I'm probably just not going to go play today, right? I'll just go play the next day. As a professional, it's like, eh, you're playing pretty much, right? Unless you wind up with what they did in Texas, and it's like, yeah, we're squeegee in the greens, and it's rooster tail, and you can't really play. So. What, what does that thought process look like from your father's, what you saw from your father's perspective and what did you learn from that? And I guess I'll, I'll paraphrase and say, you know, you've got, you've got, you get, you can get easterly winds and it's making it longer. You've got westerly winds that may be making some holes shorter. What's that? I mean, hell, you just described uh, Al Roker to me pretty much. I mean, he, he, I've, I've got a meteorologist building a golf course. 
Well, you know, I did get a pilot's license, so I know a little bit about meteorology, but <laughs> you know, nonetheless, you know, I, I grew up sailing and learned how to fly and different oh, things. Wow. So, you know, you learn a little bit, but as far as, you know, laying out a golf course and the philosophy of laying out a golf course, and you've got 14 holes that are par fours and par fives and four par threes, you try and lay out all the par threes in four different directions. You know, so, you know, you don't want them all the same direction. You know, you don't want them all downwind on one day. And you want to lay out, you know, your two longest par fours in two different directions. And you like to lay your par fives out in four different directions. So, so the wind becomes a factor no matter where it's coming from. And that's, that's just the philosophy of laying out a, a really good test of golf. You know, I mean, we, we would all like to have a downhill left to right you know, golf course that plays all the way down the mountain and, you know, you know, every fade kicks back in a fairway and, you know, <laughs> but that doesn't work. So, mm -hmm. and, um, so, you know, when you talk about, you know, do you take the wind in account? Of course you do. And you know where the prevailing breezes are during spring, summer, fall, and winter time. And you adjust your design philosophy accordingly. You know, I mean, you don't want to make, you know, every golf course we try and lay out, uh, as I said, you know, two to four good long holes all in four directions, par fives in four directions and par threes in four directions. Now, you've just taken care of 12 holes, so you've only got six holes to play with. And knowing that, and, you know, same thing like, you know, and, and, and Dean Beeman says, we're going to have this tournament on this week, and you go back there and you study what the win directions are the, the prevailing breezes for the last 30 years and Ponte Vedra say, well, if I do this, this, and this, I'm creating, you know, a wind tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's pretty simple stuff. It's just physics. And, you know, and, you know, you got to know what your weather is. And so, you know, that, that's all part of the design philosophy, but I mean, yeah, you need to be a, you know, amateur meteorologist to build these crazy <laughs> golf courses. And, you know, it, that's, that's what, you know, I mean, you got, you got to, you know, you got to be have crazy to build these things, but you just can't go out there and think you're, you know, you know it all because you don't. And, you know, I've told a lot of people, it says, you know, the one thing I can tell you that dad and I had in common is we both knew that we had no idea what we were doing, but we just trust the process. You know, and I told you guys before, it's like, it's like raising kids. Nobody's a professional at raising a kid, but the more you show up, the better they turn out yeah. and you're, you're learning that you're learning in the process. Mm -hmm. You just trust the process. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that's another hour. We, we, we don't have that long with you. So, uh, <laughs> that, so that, that's the next show, but so uh, I, I'm going to go back to Kiowa. It's uh, or the ocean course. It, you know, it, it is what it is this week. Uh, what hole it, what, we've got some experiences here. I already know what your favorite and best time was there. Uh, you, you just talked about meeting uh, uh, Mrs. Dye. So we, so we, we got that one good. Um, yeah. On the course, outside of that experience, uh, what's, uh, what's your favorite hole? I, I, this is that kid thing. You're going to yell at me again. What's, <laughs> what, what's the hole that you prefer to play the most? And what's the hole that uh, always gives you a challenge? Well, two holes stand out. You know, one's the second hole because of the way the greens laid in there. But during the Ryder Cup, Dad and I sat back, and I think back on number 14T, which is the par three coming back. And we sat back there, and the hole at the time was playing 208 yards. And from the left side of the green to the cart path, which is next to the ocean, 220 feet wide. And we watched 24 of the greatest players in the world. Singles matches last day, 12 matches. Two guys kept it in play. Wow. 22 players hit it left of the green into the gaunch. Mm -hmm. And we sat back there, you know, behind the back tee, which is like 236, 240 yards. And these guys are hitting four iron. And from the left edge of the putting surface to the cart path, 220 feet wide, two guys kept it in play. And we sat back there and giggled. I was, was, I swear to God, I was getting ready to ask, were you guys like punching each other in the side, like going, we did it? 
we're, we're, we're doing everything to keep her rolling down the hill. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he, you know, this, this is the, they're, they're trying to hit you know, that green's a little, you know, a little, a little, um, uh, top hat green, but it's got a big mode collar area. You know, the green's 80 feet wide and 115 feet long or something crazy. And, and they couldn't, one guy got on the pad, one guy cut it in the, in the collared area and 22 guys knocked it in a gunch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're just, in a court. you know, you, you could have hit it down on the beach, gotten a better shot. But they all tried, <laughs> the, the wind was blowing right to left. They all tried to hit that little draw. They liked it in there. It went left. It was, mm-hmm. it was just, it was just, Dad and I laughed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he got him again. Say hey, six six sets of humors, gentlemen. Six sets of humors. <laughs> That's Irish. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> good stuff. It's good stuff. Oh. Uh-huh. So what's uh, so you said there's a there's another one or two you mentioned, or you said you were going to mention. Well, you know the, the second hole, the way it lays up, you know, in the tree and the fairway, and this is not the green. You know, I mean, I, I really love the way it sets up. It's just it's a great hole, and, and it's got a little top hat green on it, and it's just you know. You know, there's so many great holes out there. It's just fantastic. And, you know, I know everybody remembers the 17th hole, which I think can play almost 250 yards, you know, left to right par three. Yeah. And what, what I haven't found out, you know, last time I played the ocean course, which has been about five or six years ago, there was not a, a hazard on the golf course except for the water hazard. All the sand was considered in play. And that's correct for and, this week also. They did announce that, that there are no rakes yeah. on course. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, so there's, you know, you can ground your club any place you want. And uh, because of the way that thing's built, it's, it's, it, would, it would be tough to figure out what is a bunker, what isn't a bunker. But, <laughs> you know, if you look at the, if, if, you, if you get the, you know, Google Maps, you know, plus, and you look at the area of maintained grass out there, and say, you got to be kidding me. There's a lot more maintained grass out there than you ever think. But, you know, they just, you know, those guys, they, they get out there in that, that wind and, and right there next to the ocean. And, you know, if you could play with blinders on and not know that you're at the ocean course, you'd probably play pretty good. But you're out there and, you know, you've got, you know, everything dad throws at you. You got everything that God throws at you. You got everything that nature has at you. And then, you know, make a wrong step in the lake and you got an alligator looking at you. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. oh, you may, you may want to rethink that Cam Smith pick buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, so, you know, it's like, you know, uh, you know there's, 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 there's so much beauty. There's so many other things out there besides the golf course that distract you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. It's really going to be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited that the weather's not going to be, uh, and, and we're going to get wind, right? I mean, it's right on the ocean, so the wind's going to blow. Yeah. It's, it's inevitable that that's going to happen. I'm excited that it's not going to be it's supposedly, allegedly, we're not going to have any rain. So I think that's going to be yeah. uh, interesting to see that, you know, we're just dealing with wind and it'll, I don't want to say it's going to set up fair because, you know, the PGA is doing their job of, well, they're making the, the best in the world hit the ball where they need to hit the ball to score. <clears throat> Well, you know, it would be nice if we have one day with, you know, light winds and medium winds and heavy winds and then the wind from a different direction just to give a variety. Sure. And, uh, but it looks, it looks like the weather's going to be clear and, uh, which is great, you know, and, uh, you know, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as long as there's enough wind to keep the sand gnats down, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Uh, what's, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I don't think you said it. I think it's good. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, has it been five or six years since you've been down to the ocean course? You said to be, since you played it, has it been five or six? Yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah. It's been about years, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, uh you, have you got plans to go back down anytime soon? Oh, you know, you know, I would love to, you know, right now I'm just trying to get from, you know, Punta Cana back up to Urban, Ohio with my, my lovely bride and the two puppies. So that's, that's, the, that's my first thing. And then, you know, uh, something I do very special every year is we play, uh, golf and a little shotgun on Friday called fast Friday. 
the day before time trials at the Indianapolis 500. I, I was about, yeah, I'm glad you, you, I'm glad you went there because you brought it up earlier. You, uh, you were talking about those guys going around the track at 230 miles per hour. So 233, I think you may have mentioned. So, but, uh, some guy named Pete Diary built that golf course. So we have a lot of fun there. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, did, have you, did you guys ever been up there? Have you been up to the track at all? Have you ever seen that? Uh, so that's the second invitation I'm going to ask you for. <laughs> yeah. Well, you uh, know, re remember, you know, I am born and raised in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. and the Indy 500, as far as we're concerned, there's only one race. Uh, understood. Un understood. And I think that's the only golf course you can play inside of a racetrack. Well, the original, the original had nine golf holes inside, 18 holes outside. And this will blow your mind. Inside the track, inside the asphalt of the track, there's a little over 330 acres. That's wow. enough for 36. Wow. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's two and a half miles around that thing. You know, it's, it's pretty good size. So who's, um, who's the most, uh, eh, that'll be a weird way to, uh, who, who have you played golf with that was a, uh, that was a driver or, or maybe an owner I, either way. Oh, nobody really. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough and, and got to know Tony George pretty well during the process and, yeah. and his family has been you know, very, you know, you know, uh, very good friends with the Dye family and, and, uh, of course, now Mr. Penske owns the uh, the track, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the wonderful improvements he's done, mm -hmm. and uh, looking forward to seeing the golf course. Nice, so. nice, perfect. Because that's in what two weeks? That, am I missing the date? No, weeks? no, no. It, it's Friday. Oh, this Friday. We're, okay, we're, we're, we're on the way. Yeah, it's Friday. The uh, uh, time trial starts Saturday, and um, uh, the race is the following weekend. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, you got to get a move on it then. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm. We're 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 fishing tomorrow and driving to Ohio on Wednesday. So I was going to ask you about fishing because right you tell me about the fishing and what you caught this week. Well, I'm, I'm heading up to a place called Black Hawk Ranch, which is uh, in a place called Clarksville, Georgia. It's got wonderful trout fishing, and spend the day with some friends, and then the next morning we drive up to Urbana, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So nice. nice. I'll be back to the. The birthplace of Die Golf from 1922. Mm -hmm. And how far is Urbana from? Uh, I'm assuming it's a just across the the line, state line right there. But I, I, I'm, that's me assuming. No, Ur, 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 Urbana, Ohio is about 30 miles due west of Jack Nicholson's Muirfield Village. Okay. So All it's right. a, just a, just you know between it's between Dayton and, and Columbus. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so, so you've got a, uh, do you play in, uh, like, is it a, it's a tournament you said, or, uh, at the, uh, at the track on Friday. Yeah. Uh, it's a two o'clock shotgun they have at every year. And in the morning, Chevrolet or has a, uh, has golfers out. Then at two o'clock, they have a second shotgun. And, uh, for between two and six o'clock, you can barely hear each other think. And then at six o'clock when the track shuts down. You can hear the river running through the golf course and the crickets and the birds and all that stuff, but it's a, it's a very amazing. unique day. Very, very special, special day. That sounds amazing. Actually. Yeah. That sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. yeah. Yeah. I'll send you guys a video or two. You do that. Yes. that I want to see it. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that'll be okay. great to see. Um, and ready? And so Phoebe, did any, anything surprise you from the players this year? Anything surprising from the players or from the players championship? The championship. Yeah, the championship. Yeah. Oh God, I had fun watching it just like everybody else, you know. I think you know, I think I, Cal, he was I, telling me about how many balls went in the water a tons this year, right? It was, oh yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, the, the unique thing about the players' championship is like Augusta. People now know every hole. Mm -hmm. And they can't wait for the players to play it. You know, and that's very unique. You know, all the other courses, you know, you know, all the other majors are on, on uh, different courses, this and that. But, I mean, it, it's gotten to the point now that where everybody knows every hole at TPC. It's like they know every hole at Augusta. Yeah. And it's become 
it, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a fan favorite, you know, it's, it it's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So partner, we got dinner on the table. Yeah. Yeah. We'll let you go. Hey, PB, before you go, any picks for this week, who do you think is going to win? <laughs> but as I said, the person who plays the best. <laughs> PB die. Enjoy dinner. Tell, uh, tell the missus. We said, thanks for letting you have a little bit of time with us. We appreciate it, sir. And uh, look, hoping to see you sometime soon. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. All right, partner. Be safe. We'll see you guys later.